y'all, welcome back. I'm Mama Dr. Jones, a board certified OBGYN, a mom to four, and today I am so excited to talk to you about the COVID vaccine in pregnancy with expert epidemiologist, Dr. Sonia Hernandez-Diaz. She is a professor of epidemiology and joining the forum at the Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health. Her research centers specifically around the safety of medications in pregnancy. Welcome to the channel. I am so excited to have you here today. Do you wanna tell our audience a little bit about yourself? I've told them, you know, where you're from and, and basically what you do, but I would also love to hear just a little bit more about your research and what you do uh, in epidemiology. Great, thank you. Pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. My research at the school focuses on the safety of medications during pregnancy, and I have been trying to produce evidence on the utilization and the safety of vaccines and, and medications during pregnancy for the uh, mother and for the developing fetus and, and baby later on. That's a much needed field and something I so often see in my own practice that we just don't have answers to tell our patients so many times about the safety of medication. So I'm glad that there are people out there who've, you know, dedicated their life to researching that. Yes, thank you. I'm glad the information that we produce can be used in real practice and, and by, by real people. Absolutely. And speaking of, you know, using things in real practice and by real people, you were part of starting the Coronavirus and Pregnancy Registry early on in the pandemic. Can you tell us a little bit about what that is and how it came about? Also kind of the information that you got from it? So one year ago now, when the pandemic started, we realized that it's, it was going to affect pregnancy as well. And because it was a new virus, we really knew nothing about it, right? So we, we had some expert opinions based on what we knew about uh, other coronaviruses or, or the flu. With that in mind, we designed an international cohort of pregnancies. So we have collected information from 68 countries. They participate by completing questionnaires online monthly during this period. And we ask about their COVID infection, the symptoms, the severity, the treatments. I can tell you, for example, that we confirmed that COVID uh, during pregnancy, particularly if you have severe COVID at the end of pregnancy, the risk of delivering a preterm uh, baby before 37 weeks is uh, uh, substantially increased. So it is a serious uh, condition that you do not want to have in, in, uh, during pregnancy. I've done a lot of videos on this channel about COVID and pregnancy, and a lot of the information that we have to share there, along with just firsthand accounts and kind of case reports has come from registries like the coronavirus and pregnancy registry. So it's been very helpful to us trying to guide our patients. As you know, pandemic medicine is just very different from regular medicine. As we move towards getting the vaccine more available to the general public, what do you think about these claims of infertility that people are floating around? So far, we have not seen any red flag and the claim about the infertility comes from um, the hypothesis that maybe there is a cross reactivity with the vaccine could trigger a reaction to, uh, of the body's to uh, proteins that are in the placenta uh, as well and that that could lead to early losses and therefore infertility. We have not seen, again, these red flags and we know for sure that um, uh, the vaccines do not prevent pregnancies because there were pregnancies during the clinical trials, even when they were recommended not to get pregnant, but we will need larger numbers uh, for us to be able to, with more certainty, know that there is no increased risk uh, in uh, the larger population. The, the rumors uh, were false and uh, there are no uh, evidence to support that we need to be worried about infertility after the vaccine. I'm glad you said that. And just for my audience watching, we didn't corroborate before this meeting to come up with an answer. And you said almost exactly what I said in my video about that. So I think it should be reassuring to people who are watching this to continue to hear the same answer from experts over and over. We're having this conversation really because we didn't include pregnant people in the trials. So at the beginning of the pandemic, you had all these OBGYNs out there saying, please don't exclude pregnant people. It's going to make it hard for us to counsel patients. What are your thoughts on if people who are pregnant should have been included in the trials earlier? Yes, I personally think that they should have been allowed to participate in the trials. Um, 
pregnant women are excluded for good reasons, don't get me wrong. The, the, the concern is that they can be exposed to vaccines or medications that may not be effective to start with, and we don't know about the safety. So with that intention to protect them, they are actually excluded. And by doing that, first, they are not allowed to get access to things like the vaccine that can provide benefits. But second, then they go on into the real world and get the vaccine. Now we have to wait more months for them to have safety data. So even when the intentions are good, at the end, the results are not so good for, for uh, pregnant people. In the last decades, as you probably know, there have been a movement saying that we should protect pregnant women with research. You, you can imagine that the implementation of this in, in real life is, is not easy. It has even ethical, legal and logistic ramifications because, for example, in your practice, if there is a new vaccine with little evidence, would you enroll or if you were pregnant, or would you recommend your patients to enroll? And, and we are moving towards a, at least allowing the uh, women to decide whether they want to participate if they are pregnant. Um, in studies or not. Yeah, thank you. Those were all really great points. You know, those are things that are so important if you're just testing a new medication, but I'd imagine that being in the middle of a pandemic makes it a little different because things are moving so quickly and you need that information so much faster. I know we have lots of like information from the CDC and, and VSAFE and things like that that we're tracking, you know, and we just got really great information about that not too long ago, but when do you think we'll have more actual research oriented data on the vaccine when given to pregnant people? I think we have to be a little patient because as you can imagine, the, the vaccine just started. For those pregnancies exposed in the first trimester, we have to see what happens at birth. And some of the outcomes, as you know, we will only observe when the, the mom delivers. We'll have to wait up to nine months from now. My concern is that at the same time, for sure, we are going to have case reports of here is a person vaccinated and with this adverse event, a miscarriage, a preterm delivery, but we are going to see the reports only for those vaccinated. So we'll have a lot of noise while we wait for the, the solid evidence. But maybe we, we can use this opportunity to encourage uh, pregnant people to please participate in the VSAFE, in the surveillance. The more we contribute information, the sooner we're going to have the, the answer. So it's very important that now in this pandemic that we all contribute and including um, sharing uh, information after the vaccination because that can help um, other uh, people down the road. So speaking of, getting more information. We recently got a study out that was very encouraging that it looks like maternal antibodies do transfer through the placenta to the fetus, which is very encouraging. Obviously, we don't know the effects of that yet because we don't know for sure that that protects the babies, what the level is needed for protection. But to me, reading that was very encouraging. Do you think this is encouraging data? And what do you hope to see in the future with regards to what we know about the benefits? Yes, so what we know right now is that the, the benefits from the effectiveness of the vaccine preventing severe uh, COVID that we know is so devastating, particularly at the end of pregnancy, because of that, of the maternal benefit, uh, that would be substantial enough. But as you say, that, that we have seen some, some reports of maybe the immunity actually passing on to, to the neonates so that as we have seen for other vaccines, that vaccination in the mother might protect uh, the, the infant after birth, at least for a few months. I love to hear that. And I hope that's encouraging to people who are listening, who are pregnant and trying to consider what to do. And obviously we can encourage them to you know, talk to your doctor to decide what's best for you. It does seem hopeful at this point based on the CDC information, that what we know about the vaccine, that it is protecting people who are pregnant and we haven't seen any red flags yet. What would you say to someone who is kind of on the fence, doesn't know what they should do about how they weigh this decision about whether to get vaccinated or not when they're pregnant? It's a risk benefit balance. We have strong evidence about the effectiveness. So we know that the vaccines work in reducing the risk of severe COVID. And we have all reasons to believe that that's the case in pregnancy. And we know that COVID in pregnancy happens, but I think particularly for those pregnant people that are working in places where they cannot maintain social distance, so they are at higher risk of infection, or if they have risk factors such as obesity, hypertension, 
diabetes, asthma, uh, I think they should consider having the vaccine if it is offered. In those cases, the risks of having severe COVID outweigh potential unknown hypothetical risk uh, that we still need to rule out from the vaccination. Yeah, that's, that's great. I love that. I think that's really excellent sound, level-headed, and balanced advice. I also love something you said earlier about as we kind of move towards, you know, getting that more definitive information on the safety data that we're going to hear a lot of noise. And I've seen a lot of even straight up false information being shared. Just to give you an example, a good friend of mine who's a physician, she found out she had miscarried and she was planning to have a DNC. She got the COVID vaccine in after that and some anti-vaccine group got a hold of that online and shared it in mass numbers that she got vaccinated and then had the miscarriage when all along we knew that that wasn't even true because it happened before. What would you tell someone who's seeing these reports like that, even if it wasn't straight up false, maybe about the overall risk of miscarriage and, and how easily construed these things can become if they get in the wrong hands? I guess it's part of the world of communication we live in, right? It has many advantages of access to information, but it also has access to, you know, it gives us access to misinformation. So I think that if something like that pops into your phone, uh, uh, maybe going to uh, uh, websites that you can trust, uh, CDC, WHO, the American uh, Society for OBGYN and uh, Maternal Fetal Medicine, all these places have good summaries and the most common uh, you know, ask questions. Your YouTube videos are amazing as well, very balanced. I, I really enjoy watching them. But, so going to places that you trust. And I think this conversation even should be something that people take note of because I work, I'm clinically at the bedside with these patients all the time and I still see the benefit of seeking out information from people who are experts in, in other parts of the same kind of field that I'm in. Like there's always someone who knows more about something than you do. And I think it's important that people, exactly like you said, are going to those sources and finding you know, good balanced information. Thank you so much. This has been very enlightening and very helpful. Do you have somewhere that you want you know, to direct people to in either research or your social media or anything that you want us to share here about where people can find out more information about you or what you do? I think they can go to the, the, the website, the Harvard China School of Public Health. There are so many things going on. There are also forums and videos about different things, uh, many things about COVID. And um, they can also see their links to ongoing studies and recent publications. Thank you to Dr. Hernandez Diaz for being here today and answering our questions. I could not do the job that I do without people like her who are doing the work behind the scenes to make sure that I know how to counsel and take care of my patients. I hope that you learned something today, y'all. I will see you next Monday.